as I said earlier, what we are aiming to prevent is bilirubin-induced brain damage. It can present in the acute stage with acute bilirubin encephalopathy. In the early stages, the baby has lethargy, hypotonia, and poor suck. In the intermediate stage, the baby starts getting stuporose, maybe irritable and hypertonic as well. And this is typically at this stage that we get the posturing, the retrocolis and the opisthotonic posturing we get with typical bilirubin-induced brain injury. The baby may have fever due to hypothalamic involvement. High pitch cry, which can alternate with drowsiness and hypotonia, may be there. So poor feeding is inevitably associated. This compounds a problem. And obviously, you can see that these features are not specific for bilirubin-induced brain damage. It can present in any baby with sepsis and meningitis, hypoglycemic brain injury, and so on as well. So this is just a chart which gives us a tabulation form, scoring system for bilirubin-induced brain injury and the features. So we can categorize into mental status, muscle tone, and cry pattern with a score of zero to three for all three. If the mental status is normal, uh, it's a zero score, sleepy, but can be roused or decreased feeding, uh, one, and lethargy, poor, suck, irritable, etc. two. Similarly, for muscle tone, normal tone, persistent or mild hypotonia, mild to moderate hypotonia, and hypertonia alternating, and uh, arching of the neck and opisthotonus may start and persistent retrocolis and opisthotonus. And in cry pattern, we have the normal cry, high pitch cry when aroused, if the baby has a shrill and difficult to console type of crying. And then if there is inconsolable crying or weak and absent cry become comatose, it becomes three. So yeah, as you can see here, the scores of one to three are consistent with subtle signs of acute bilirubin encephalopathy and scores four to six indicate moderate bilirubin injury and uh, scores of seven to nine indicates advanced bilirubin injury. So most of these babies with advanced or moderate injury would be going for an acute or emergency exchange transfusion. Kernicterus is nothing but the chronic form of bilirubin encephalopathy. So this bilirubin binding in the brain areas uh, causes permanent brain damage and it can cause a severe form of athetoid cerebral palsy. We may have hearing problems, auditory dysfunction, it's a sensory neural type of deafness. Dental enamel hypoplasia as the, uh, or dysplasia as the developing teeth buds are sensitive to bilirubin binding as well. Uh, typically along with the athetoid cerebral palsy, we also have paralysis of the upward gaze and intellectual handicaps of varying degrees may be seen. Thankfully, Kernicterus is not seen that frequently these days due to our aggressive screening and management. It is rare, but still happens. It's more often seen in resource-limited settings where the parents may not be educated adequately or the follow-up system may not be adequate. Uh, in many case reports in the early 2000s, there were occurrences even in the United States. And uh, population-based estimates for connectors in term babies in the developed countries ranges from 1 in 30,000 to 1 in 200,000 live births. Newborns are being discharged in the hospital sooner than ever before because of insurance pressures. And early discharge means we are less able to observe the newborns for the development of jaundice. So it brings in the importance of proper screening, 